this episode of That King's Hill Podcast. Uh, it's school's in session. It's the time we've been waiting for for months and for discussing. ring a ding a ding a And buddy, get your books. What's the Pink Floyd? But the biggest news was just the fact that we're back. Yeah, we are back. You know, summer's over. You know, it's time for us to get back into a routine every other week. So uh, We also talk about uh, construction on Main Street East. Like, we were all you know, not able to turn left for a month. It caused havoc. Just left that behind. Yeah. yeah. Which hurt me. Right? Big NASCAR. Right? Right? <laughs> and a whole bunch of individuals in the town of Kingsville wrote the uh, municipal uh, government and uh, council a letter. A very strongly worded letter. So stay mm-hmm. tuned for all that and more on this episode of That Kingsville Podcast. That Kingsville Podcast proudly brought to you by Kingsville Brewery. Uh, visit their website, kingsvillebrewery.com. Free delivery in Windsor and Essex County. Order a case of Czech lager, light hay, Hefeweizen. It feels like lager season. It is lager season. So you, you think of the stout, right? You stout know, yeah. season's it, coming. It is stout season. Yeah, it's not coming. stout season yet. I would no. say we're like in between, like we're almost in lager season, like after ale season, I think. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I yeah. would agree. We, we Post start, Hefeweizen. Yeah, get a little hearty. You know, get, yeah. the, get a little body in the, in the beer. Anyway, again, Kingsville Brewery. <laughs> Go to the website, order case, free delivery, Windsor, Essex County. Thank you, Kingsville Brewery, for supporting That Kingsville Podcast. Welcome to That Kingsville Podcast. We're back. It's me, Dave, Kevin, and Steve. What's up? Hooray. Hi, guys. Now it's after Labor Day. Yeah, we're back in the swing of things. You know, no more summer vacation. Back to the back to the grind, gentlemen. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Why are we thanks to Gary? Well, well, I mean, it's just nice that... That he's hanging out with us again. Well, yeah, but he, you know, working Missed around company, working around schedules and whatnot. And here he we continues go. Continues to accept us. Not <laughs> just and, shocking, and produce this wonderful program that so many people in town rely on for news. Like, <laughs> hey, the school opened. Oh, I heard. Yeah, well, your kids aren't there yet. Ours are. And any 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 initial feedback a couple of days in, like like in from your wife as well too, right? So I'm going to say overall. It has been well received in a sense of it's it's clean. It's it better it's new. Be. Well, no, but you think about they they've been doing construction up until yeah. well continuing to do construction. No, I, I think there's there's a nice feeling. Um, you know, I've got one in high school and one in ele- one year left in the elementary level. So he is now um bumping into people he he knew from, you know, previous schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he's excited about that. You know, he, as a French immersion student, he continues to be with the students he's been with since kindergarten. Sure. But there's, there's new faces within the building. Um, my daughter's in grade 10. Um, she was probably more anxious, I would say this year than last year in a way, or maybe it was just a different sort of anxiety, if you will. Um, but you know, first couple of days have been great. Um, my wife's classroom looks pretty impressive. There's some um, minor. I'll, I'm going to go out and say minor. Oh um, yeah, no, the pictures she minor posted work still online. to be done. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. within that room, I know some of the other classrooms do have a little bit more substantial work to be completed. Mm-hmm. But listen, um, we've we've sort of gone ad nauseum on some of the, some of the shortcomings. Sure, failures. Um, but at the end of the day, the building itself, you know, the the jury's still out as to how it's going to handle the population, everything. Mm. But I will say a, a good start. Have we heard any numbers on... Well, it's I, probably I was just, just, just going to throw it back to Dave and, and yeah. see what feedback you have before we kind of, if That's, you don't... Yeah, because I, I would I d- love that. I do have a number, but I'm not, I'm not sure if it's substantiated. So we'll talk. Anyway, yeah, I've got one in grade 11. And having her spent a couple of years in KDHS... Coming to the new school, some feedback was uh, it's very small. Like the the hallway structure and the lockers are a lot smaller than what they're used to. So uh, she's noticed a lot of uh, students not able to put their book bags into their locker just because of the you know the size difference between what it is. Right, that's that's a problem, and the fact that it's a much smaller area that that population is now condensed into. Right, less like, PDA in the hallways. Or more, depending on what type. Of- <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but it, but so that was that was some initial feedback. Overall, the the kids really don't care. 
right? Like they they still view it as yeah, you know, it's school, right? It's only when you reflect back on what you did during that time and you can reminisce about some of the innocence and some of the things that happened. Right. So the other my other daughter, she just started grade 9. So she's 2 days into high school. And I think that it couldn't have been a better opportunity to have that transition as this opening for this entire school because all of them are in that situation. There isn't one kid that's comfortable walking through those doors. Combine that with the anxiety of grade nine and, oh my gosh, what's the, what's the, what, what I got to do? With, uh. I think that as a collective, everybody was on you know the same or varying kind of stages of that kind of first day anxiety but neither of them had anything horrible to say aside from the layout of the school uh being different um let's describe it as an l shape with two floors rather than the h or, or eight grid that kdhs was uh, but also it was the the amount of traffic in the areas it's it's difficult to navigate and i'm sure a lot of kids just are trying to figure out how to get from one place to the next mm -hmm. efficiently but that's the extent mm -hmm. so, they, so far. And I think you're right with, with your youngest. It, it is a perfect time. The ones that probably the most impacted are those that are now in their grade 12 year. You know, they spend their first three years of high school as Cavaliers in a, in a building that for some, you know, one or two parents attended to. So, you know, you can still look back on that nostalgia. And, and for some, it's like, okay, well, oh, one more year, right? But at the same time, they also get to be a bit a part of or a part of history um you know as the first graduating class of of the school the new school um you know so there's you know you got to i guess take the good with the bad and I, and i think a lot of people now are on board with saying okay it's here we're looking to the future um and and you know the those hiccups and obstacles that come along the way then i guess they'll be dealt with on an as needed basis hopefully there aren't any or many but so just a side note. So you mentioned that it's French immersion, French, you know, predominant. So one thing we never considered or even thought of was the French name for the school, right? There is a French name for this, the school. It's we, not, <laughs> it's not here migration district school uh, with a French accent. It is, and I'm, I'm terrible in, in pronouncing French. So this just rolls off the tongue, right? Uh, L'école secondaire du district de la migration de Erie, right? Like not rolling off the tongue real quick, because if it was something like Kingsville district school, it would be L'école uh, district du Kingsville or something but like I'm that. But I'm sure that was something that was completely vetted by the um, <laughs> trustees in the process of naming it. They so what, what do we, you know... We can't argue with I, that. I just, I thought that was hilarious because both mine were in French immersion as well. And it was like, yeah, have you heard what the French name is? Like, what? Because I asked, have the kids said anything about the name when they got there? You know, hey, we're actually here at this place that everybody really hates the name of. And they've all been hyper-focused on their own challenges. It hasn't boiled down to, you know, there's not been a sporting team in, uh, established yet. There hasn't been one competition yet. So, yeah. so the name will fire up, I'm sure, like a like a bonfire again. But is there a gym? Not yet. Still, that's still a work in progress. Yeah, no tech, no tech rooms, no gym, and some of the classrooms are in various states of construction. So some don't have lighting. There isn't a lot of finished paint. Uh, there's, from what I've been told. Yeah. So there, no, this, and but functionally, it's it's able to facilitate students yes some some classes are <clears throat> sort of moving around to vacant classrooms yeah. so you know there's you know, maybe a, a teacher with a a prep period and just under the circumstances you know a shop class may have to go into that classroom um i did happen to catch the ctv windsor news last night and they did a nice piece on the new beacon, beacon Heights Heights. School yeah, sure did didn't they um and it in in they Credit mentioned. to um, was it Bob Belichico's report? I, I think or, it. I think it was. Um, anyway, I, I don't want to. I think it was. But um, you know, it, it did mention the fact that there were still some, there was still some work to do, but there was nothing on Kingsville's new school, and mm -hmm. I don't know if that's because there is more to do, and maybe the board doesn't want it 
broadcast yet, but I, I look at this in that in two ways. So A, um, is the board, if the board's not ready to showcase it, why are we in there? Well, they have to, right? <laughs> it's no, a matter but, of they don't have enough space. To sure, sure. But then it, it, Foresight should have said, okay, it's not going to, anyway. Yeah. I, I, here yeah. I am in one breath saying we're going to try and stay out of the now I'm like, yeah. No, but at the same time, I, I was more annoyed that regardless of what state it's in, it's a brand new school. Kids are attending there for the very first day. Please give us our feature. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, that was that was more the the angle I took on that one. Did you, did you see the AM eight hundred article? They did a very similar article, and the the number of attendees is where I got that from. For me, AM eight hundred says uh, about seventeen hundred and fifty students total at the Kingsville school that that's I'm glad they were able to get it because I was just going through a, uh, a friend of mine who's a current reporter had sent me a, te- a screenshot of a text exchange that they had had with <laughs> yeah someone at the board and they were refusing to give correct number. so that Which was that was bizarre the po- that was the point so that was where AM 800 guesstimated and they came out with that based upon whatever their sources were I, I challenge that wholeheartedly well, I mean, I every year I did back to school articles. It was never an issue getting enrollment numbers. And, and it's it's funny because the the person I was speaking to said those exact words because yeah. it's something that up up until like last year was still doing yep. those stories and they weren't able to get information on Kingsville. I would call the year. principals and and you know for the last few years KPS's enrollment was going down a little bit for various reasons. Jack Miners was going up. Uh, St. John's was steady or or increasing, but I never had an issue getting those numbers. And with the high school, even when it went down, I I can tell you that enrollment at the high school is up. Mm-hmm. I, so. I don't doubt what, what did we have when we discussed it earlier? Is it fifty empty seats for capacity for high school? Seventy. Seven, thank you. No total. Total yeah. in the entire school. There's there uh, now that was based on. It's not up seventy. I can say that high school. Yes. Well, we don't know about elementary. No. Eh. Well, hey, maybe, maybe here we are. Thank, thankfully, they can walk on that track, and uh, oh, okay, so or find okay, so then eat. that so the, that reminds me. Well, okay, go, and then I've got the one complaint that I heard otherwise outside of student uh, feedback. Yeah, go. just having an elementary student. There's nothing to do right now. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. There's stand there, in the field. St- yes, start smoking. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so well, hey. <laughs> What are you doing today? I don't know. I just decided to start smoking, guys. <laughs> no, but that's, back to that's just it. Like, it's... <laughs> hey, there's not a lot to do. I will... The only, the only I will, public school um, the smoking section. <laughs> I'll say this. I was in, in talking to my parents this morning about the school briefly. Um, it was... It came to me that, you know, the first major event... I mean, when you went to an event at KPS or Jack Minor that involved numerous students, parking was always an issue. At both schools, as it should be. It's fantastic. Now, I don't know what parking capacity is at this school, but you sure as heck can't park on Jasperson. Um, the arena and the grounds around the arena offer um, some over parking. And then there's a nice little, bleh, nice. Nice, nice little walking path. Okay. Try and enunciate a little better. Um, connecting you know, the school property and the arena grounds. But otherwise, the neighborhood is likely going to be the overflow. So, you yeah. know, get, get ready. Listeners in that area, be yeah. prepared. Get ready. Woody Crest. And what Lucas. So the, the parking situation was one. Uh, there was some confusion about the drop off areas for the elementary students and whatnot. But the, the one other complaint that I'd heard was about the cafeteria. So anyone who is seeking food or whatnot, they they have to leave the premises, right? So it is a longer trip up Jasperson to get to McDonald's or Zares or what is it? What's in the mall there? The oh, the shawarma place, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, Pizza, yeah, right. Gyros, right? Gyros, Bar burrito, right, right. LCBO, right? So they all have to go that way. <laughs> that <is awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're gonna start smoking, <laughs> yeah. Might as well hand. grab a king can to go with it. <laughs> you guys got Laker? <laughs> this, seg- this segment brought to you by Kinsel Brewery. <laughs> oh, so the, the 
the confusion over the first couple of days is how do you do this, right? Uh, the amount of time that it's taken students to figure out how to get around the school and and do the things you need to like a bathroom break in between and then for you know going out and getting something to eat right all of the students are going all of them for the most part because nobody can stay back at the cafeteria to eat there and purchase food there they have to either have brought it with them or they don't eat kind of thing so mm. it's causing more of a and maybe because it's just early and noon kids haven't settled into a routine yet but like the the canteen at the arena opened up for food today and apparently <laughs> it was just a mob scene. So, you know, that being the closest proximity to, to buying anything for consumption, mm -hmm. like that's a, a major oversight. I, well, that's I'm, nice the town's <clears throat> competing against businesses. So. Hey. <laughs> We'll get the to town this. is a business. Hey, later in the episode, oh, yeah, we'll true. get to the town. Sorry. Don't you worry. Yeah, it's a corporation. No, you're right. Okay, um, I take it back. I, I will add one more thing. Um, yeah. There was I can't remember which um, which Cougar account it was, but they did they were seeking um, thoughts on naming the atrium, the Coyote account. You mean? Uh, it, it may have been. Uh, no, it wasn't the. Um, I don't think it was the. Uh, what sounds the like two words. Anyway, parody account. Yes, it was not the parody. No, you, no, no, you, no. It wasn't them. Yeah. So I, I just not thinking. I said, oh, just keep it simple. The Erie Migration Atrium, EMA. Oh, <laughs> imagine, imagine my <laughs> embarrassment. Oh anyway. no, <laughs> zing. Well, you know, overwhelmingly, again, it's not an issue that's going to go away. There's going to be more as the next months go on. Uh, there still is the initiative to rename it. There still is momentum from the community that is still upset about all the proceedings. Um, so crossing guards, traffic, crossing guards. Yeah, there's there's still so many layers to this onion that are going to get peeled back, and we'll bring them here. <laughs> well, honestly, I find here. I find it interesting that the the John Norton administration still hasn't put forward a traffic report to 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 say where the the traffic how the traffic should be dealt with because the crossing guards and 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 a uh, good thing they're there because and i drive through that area there's kids walk like when i go through when the high school kids are there before the crossing guards are out there's kids walking everywhere all over the place oh, yeah. no like the the signalized um lights that that are there are far are way too far south and and so all the kids are crossing a woody crest but yeah. they're not waiting because the traffic there is at a standstill, so they're just crossing in front of cars. I almost hit two kids yesterday. With intent or just... Oh. I didn't like the cut of their jib. <laughs> and then and then I was pulling forward. I was trying to go through today, got stuck in the, in, in the line to get into the school, which is like understandable, except someone that was in front of me, like when it was turned to go, decided to let five buses drive in front of them coming to make the left-hand turn because the buses can't make that left because there's so many cars trying to come in mm -hmm. from the south. Um, we still don't have a report on how they should deal with it. It was it was never put together. The, the crossing guards and the school zone were put forward by a notice of motion from a counselor that that decided by them by themselves where those things should go. Um, and then there was never a staff report to back up what administration thought about it. Mm -hmm. So we're still in a situation where administration hasn't come forward with what the recommendations of, of our town engineers are of how traffic should be and pedestrian traffic should be dealt with in the area. Um, now we have school zones, we have crossing guards, we have uh, uh, crossings that kids aren't using. Uh, we have an intersection where people can't make right and left hand turns, and we don't have a report that says how it should be dealt with. Correct. Like, like yeah. how is that possible? I, th well, I think yeah. it has been noted, though, that the crosswalk on Jasperson was not put in specific specifically. Why can't I talk? It's specifically. Been, been for the school. Okay, but it was placed at the driveway of the south driveway of the school. I, and I think that's somewhat, maybe there was intent there, but I think more so that crossing was put in just for pedestrian traffic when the road was reconstructed. Well, then they that was silly because they should have put it at the intersection. And perhaps, perhaps, but you know, at, at the time, <clears throat> when you look at the distance from Maine to the second and where the, the other crossing was planned and 
they obviously felt that that was a, a good location. Plus, at that time, that's where the sidewalk ended. If you look at mm-hmm. it, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I'm not I'm not trying to defend or I'm not trying to kind of question your analysis here. I'm just saying that the sidewalk actually didn't end there. The sidewalk on that side on the east side of the road ended like significantly before at, that at the last crossing. house. Yeah, just okay. after the last. Not significantly, probably, but like probably about three lots before that that um, crossing. Well, now they're committed, right? In the council, they approved either, you know, possibly relocating the traffic light that's in front of KDHS over there or spending a hundred grand on a new one, right? Is a lit timed intersection, like a, a stop light lit intersection yeah. instead of a, what do they call these? Pedestrian X lighted cross. I, I can't remember. Pex. Pex. Yeah. And granted, I mean, <clears throat> The students are going to be students in the sense of what they happen. can cross, they're going to cross. But they also need to be encouraged by administration from the school to say, hey, look, this is there for you guys. Make sure you use it for your own safety. We don't want anything happening. And I, maybe they have. I'm not saying they, they haven't. But it's it's also on. But you know, but if you're, I, I don't, I, yes, you're absolutely right. And in a perfect world, students would all listen to administration and and, <coughs> and they would walk to Woody Crest or walk to Jasperson up Woody Crest and then they would make a turn and they would walk uh, 100 feet down Jasperson to cross and then walk another 100 feet back up to the cross the road from where they just came from so that they can enter into the high school area of the school. Like, th- Oh, coming from the north. Yeah, coming from the mm-hmm. north. I, I get it. Coming from the south. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you've got a wider yeah. path. Yeah, you've yeah, got more room. But but all of all of the Woody Crest subdivisions coming up Woody Crest. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. No, that one doesn't make sense when you've got an entrance right there. So and, yeah, and that that's one, where you, and that's why I kind of went off last episode yeah. about needing a crossing guard there. Yeah. At one point in time, there was you know I need to put in the that light in front of KDHS to allow traffic <laughs> to cross Main Street because there was a subdivision that got put in on the south side of the yeah. road. That, you know, a lot of students were walking towards the school. So anyway, all I'm saying is it'd be nice to see <coughs> experts t- like come out. Amherstburg did an engineer's report on it. Yeah. And, and maybe and, it's and coming out with recommendations. Maybe it's yeah. In our limited. Well, we didn't expect the school to show up. Like it was off. <laughs> we didn't expect it to be done by September. <laughs> much, much, much like. Like, did we, are we surprised? Is this, yeah. we didn't watch it be built for two years. We couldn't have done a study <laughs> to figure out how to get people there. Hey, we waited until August to start construction on Main Street. <laughs> well, no, they put up the barrels and then waited two weeks. I was. Oh geez! Not to sound like a Debbie Downer, but I was not a I was not a huge fan of dump trucks operating at five a.m. beside my house when the contractor realized he was going to miss the deadline. Yeah, whoops a daisy. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, uh, that sucked. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, and I was this close <laughs> to texting uh, 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 someone in administration <laughs> to ask how or if I could see where they had requested a time. Uh, and it was approved for a time no, uh, uh, exemption, okay. but they had to get it done, which yeah. is fine. Again, and they did. And some of us had to sacrifice our sleep for it, and yeah. it's okay. It's all right. It was the summertime, and you didn't have anything to do, like you know, work or you know, yeah, just enjoy life or anything like that. But, but it's done now, right? It's, it's kind of done ish. It's done adjacent. What do you think of it? Uh, to be honest, I think that because of the rush nature, it was pretty haphazard and it is wavier than a waterbed. And I have to say like, this sort of like, yeah, not, there's undulation up and down, uh, you know, like, through the distance. Like road two? <laughs> is it the same contractor? <laughs> yes, very much so. Very much so. Apparently levels and like lasers aren't used. Wait, and like, oh shit. But one thing I'll never say is that oh, road two was rushed. David! <laughs> Where's the swear oh jar? God. Okay, hold on. In three years. <laughs> can, oh, wow. Holy. That's the first one. You guys need a lesson from radio. You don't acknowledge them. No, you just, just keep on, on trucking. Okay, just move on. <laughs> just keep like it never happened. I got it. <laughs> I can't tell you the number of times I swore. And then and just begging no one heard as I just kept on keeping on. Okay. But. Yes. Like this. Yeah. And, and, and like I was going to say, no one would. Say the road two was done quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Actually, that's the longest construction project uh, I think 
Essex County scene. Uh, it rivals the number three highway expansion with the delay to go to phase two and phase three. Yeah. I thought Cedar Point were modeling their latest ride off road two at one Ooh. point. But no, it's not that bad. But, yeah, they, but I you, do kind of want to catch that one lip with speed, though. <laughs> I haven't yet. <laughs> uh, the one was like, choo, like, like it, it just kind of looks like it's just yeah. waiting for someone to launch off it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, in my opinion, I think just, and it might, I don't know. I don't know how contractors work. I don't know how road construction works. Maybe it's not done. Maybe it is an interim solution for the fall and then the spring. They're going to just, you know, chew it all up and then make it all nice and flat. And, you know, bada boom, bada bing. You got a nice, you know, beautiful intersection that we paid a couple Twice million for? dollars for. Okay. Twice. Yeah. Well, no, they, I would assume much like you know, Road 2 had to repay because of failure with tarmac or whatever the heck it was, right? It, it doesn't come at the town's cost. It should come at the contract. Y- usually yes. it's a scratch yeah. coat. Usually they put down a scratch coat and then it waits a year and then they come back and put the final coat on. But looking at Main Street, it's like they didn't, they t- generally leave a lip on the on the curb. So yeah. you can yeah. tell like yeah. there's. I don't know. Can you do that in such a high traffic? I mean, that road would just disintegrate in no time. Oh, true. Through. So then do you come back? I don't, I'm not an engineer. I don't know. Right. I'm assuming that that's the case, right? I'm I'm going on a limb and putting faith in that the people that make the roads know how to make the roads correctly. And yes. that either A, yeah. this is correctly, which, okay, or B, because it was done late, because it was done in a rushed fashion, this is satisfactory until spring when they can reopen the, the asphalt, you know, production lines and do that well and, and let it settle right because it's good it's going to settle and when it, through a freeze thaw cycle yeah. it'll yeah and and maybe that's the case because they you know they did have to you know excavate and tear up a whole crap ton of concrete sidewalk and lay tarmac down in place right well and now what i think looks awful is the pavement on, that's replaced the the cement sidewalk because mm-hmm. if you drive by now it looks like like pavement all the way across because then you're paved into paved parking lots it just looks like one massive pavement job with some little tiny areas that they put like uh the stamped concrete yeah why even put the stamped concrete you beautiful you you put like red lines down in between pavement um i don't know why you wouldn't put cement there and i and i get i'm sure there's liability concerns with pay, with cement sidewalks and you have to cut them and you have to go back and grind them and maybe someone will trip. But if, if I hope that it's not that the, the idea to avoid liability is to pave all of the sidewalks. Could be cost related, right? You know, maybe the town didn't want to allocate more budgetary, you know, commitment towards re-concreting that quarter kilometer or, you know, 400 meters of of sidewalk that they Maybe. removed it looks awful like, and i would if i was peely i would be upset because in front of their place just looks like a giant parking lot now that's the easement that's that's the town well they uh you know they've got their way of doing things and it is what it is speaking of things with the town <laughs> and anything more about construction gentlemen before i move on no well <clears throat> The town, earlier in the month of August, um, we received a letter that was written uh, by uh, Wasam Aoun. I hope I pronounced that lawyer's name correctly. Uh, There was a uh, letter uh, formulated and distributed uh, early in August. Uh, We were sent a couple of copies uh, from anonymous people throughout the community. Uh, probably because of some of the things and topics we were discussing here on the podcast. So, uh, I'm just gonna, you know, read a little bit of it and I'm sure, you know, inquiring minds can find copies of this in the community, but we'll get the gist of it. So it's, uh, addressed to mayor Rogers uh, the entire council for that matter. Uh, Dear Mayor Rogers and town councillors, Kingsville town councillors, I represent the undersigned members of local development, housing, and business community. Over the last three years, the undersigned have seen a dramatic shift in the culture and conduct 
of the town of Kingsville administration. At one point in time, Kingsville was Essex County's beacon of progressive development, largely driven by a, a responsible and competent administrative staff capable of balancing legislative mandates, broad public interest, and the desire to promote development projects for the benefit of the entire Kingsville community. Things have drastically changed. Examples of the administration administrative conduct in question are numerous, and the undersigned have individually expressed their specific concerns to munis municipal officials. It's a lot of big words. In yeah. I'm doing okay, right? Yeah, I'm you're doing okay. Right. That's okay. <laughs> the concerning conduct can be gener generally categorized as processes which take considerably longer to complete than the same processes in comparable municipalities, administrative discretion exercise to impose requirements that are cumbersome, redundant, and add avoidable time and expense to development projects, and a general sense that the interaction with the town officials takes place in an environment of confrontation rather than one of cooperation and collaboration. So there's a few more paragraphs. There's one point in there that um, I think that needs to be made. I was trying to remember. There is one point where they discuss... As stated, the undersigned of many previous occasions have communicated their concerns to municipal officials, including the town CAO, CBO, and director of planning. This has been largely unproductive. As such, the undersigned seek an opportunity to bring these concerns directly to council. The undersigned suggests that council appoint a process review committee to review existing processes and collaboratively, collaboratively develop an improved review system with the established timelines and mandatory reporting. The undersigned suggest at least three members of council appointed to such a process review committee, along with three mentors, members of the development community. And That's, yeah. Yeah. Can I just can, yeah. I, can I read this section? Yep. Because this this is the this is what we hear a lot from elected oh, officials when we talk to them. Yeah, I hadn't got down there. And and <clears throat> These concerns are about much more than the typical administrative difficulties that all municipalities face, such as staffing shortages and budget constraints. Rather, the undersigned are unhappy with the current administrative process, which the undersigned find overly cumbersome, ineffective, and unnecessarily time-consuming. The problems extend to concerns over qualifications, experience, competency, attitude, accountability, and general lack of desire on the part of town administrative officials to accomplish things within an approved and established procedural guideline and time frame. Despite their diverse set of projects and interests, the fact that such a large group of individuals have come together on such short notice coordinated this initiative itself to be an indication these concerns are substantial, significant, and require immediate attention. To put it simply, the undersigned firmly believe that the current processes in place for development building approvals are not meeting the needs of the development community or the municipality at large. So those undersigned, and I'm going to skip the rest of it because there's yeah, a lot of... There's a lot. 22, I 22. <clears throat> uh, as listed in the letter, Anthony Abraham from Abraham Developments, Cindy Prince, Amico Properties, Brent Clundert, BK Cornerstone Design Build Limited, Christian Lefebvre, Brado Development Corporation, Dane Malik, Build Source Limited, uh, Angelo uh, Labat, 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 Greenwood Homes, uh, Joe Morav Moavro Sr. and Joe Jr., I would assume, King Devco, Dan Loop, MHC Property Developers, Carly Colasani, Excalibur Plastics Limited, Rock Island Management. Max DeAngelis, Fortis Construction Group, Gary Tavern, 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 thank you, Tavern Group, uh, Jeff Silvestri, Silvestri Enterprises, Sylvester, Sylvester, sorry, see, I did so good on the rest of it, and I'm screwing up names here. Uh, Kevin Kimball, Kimball Lumber and Building Supply Center, Walter Branco, Branco, Noah Holmes, uh, Norbert Bolger, Norbuilt Construction, David Petretta, Petretta Construction, Robert Proli, Proli Group Developments, Robert Laba, Adam Penner, Solid Rock Homes, Jeremy Truax, Dave Shirley. Trax Development, Rivard Engineered Products, Peter Valente, Valente Development Corporation, and Chet Liu, uh, YC Liu Engineering. That's a lot of folks that got together. You don't see that very often. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> Probably because we've never been proven. <laughs> um, quite possibly. But. Quite possibly. I mean. If I were to play devil's advocate, I could simply say, you know what? There was a time when in Kingsville, most people thought that the developers had everybody in their back pocket. They could do whatever they want because, you know, yeah, they, it, it seemed like almost everything they wanted was given. So is this sour grapes initially? Then I'm looking at it and reading it more and 
sort of analyzing it, and it seems, you know, much deeper than just oh, sour grapes. I, I, and I would assume that part of it is the problematic ability that the municipality hasn't been able to retain talent for one reason or another, right? It's been explained in public that uh, typically there are other municipalities within driving distance that do pay more because of the tax uh, base that it will merit that salary for that position. So, you know, we foster them as long as we can, and then they move on to, to more prosperous, you know, positions. And to his credit, Mayor Dennis Rogers has... <clears throat> stated that they're working on correcting this. Yeah, 100%. Like they're, they're, they're trying as a council to yep. ensure that, you know, when we have top-notch talent that, you know, it's not being... Oh, it's tough. Taken. Like, I, I get it. Kingsville, in, in, a, in a whole, not the hotbed of anything in the, the county aside from... You know, the place where everybody seems to want to be and entertain and eat uh, and then, you know, visit because it, you know, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> it sounds like we shouldn't have these problems, right? It sounds like we're doing a lot of the right things, a lot of the good things. Maybe that's out of the just general luck of what we've had in the past. And, you know, c uh, citizens and entrepreneurs have been able to foster their growth here without any any issue. And let's sort of preface this in that we we were given copies of this letter anonymously and yeah. right now this is just us analyzing it we Correct. did attempt to get yes uh, the lawyer for interview yep. or one of the signed people and had we done that we also would have invited mayor rogers on to kind of say okay you've seen the letter what's your take yep the, um, i did i did and again i did reach out to uh was it Sam Mayun? Uh, I think that's who it was. I apologize. But yeah, I did reach out. Unfortunately, the uh, request didn't get answered with Samu. Yeah, did not get answered. Uh, right. It was an email on his website that I attempted to contact. No phone number available. So if we do reach contact, we'll you know continue the conversation in light of whatever that provides us. But but really what the <clears throat> what they're asking for, if you take take the accusations out of the letter and 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 because I think that's the accusations are are where you can argue whether or not yep. um, uh, the the weather has the letter has merit or not. The fact that the developers feel that way is an issue, and I and and I don't th and and I don't think that their request is something that's outlandish. They're asking for a committee to be of of developers and um, and the town to be able to sit down and discuss. Um, how to streamline the process of getting development approved, and and I think that that as m most planners would tell you when you talk to them, the goal isn't to s limit development if from in a planning de uh, department. The goal is to have uh, development happen um, uh, as much as possible within the confines of what the town is looking for to happen. Hundred percent. And and if. If the issue boils down to the developers don't like what the town wants, well, then that's the developer's problem. Yeah. But if the developers are putting forward plans that uh, that are um, are fine within the guidelines of what the town has put forward, and they they're just taking too long, well, then that's something that that should be that someone should sit down and have a conversation about. There, it's it's two different things, like. If if someone wants to put up a ten story condo and they're upset because because the town won't let them put up their ten story condo, well then that's that's they they shouldn't move forward mm -hmm. and it should be delayed because that's not within the what the town wants. If that person wants to put up a four story condo um, in the area that's designated to put up four story condos, then then the town should doesn't need to help them with it, but it shouldn't put up roadblocks to prevent it either. Yeah, yeah it should be facilitated so that there isn't was stated in the letter unnecessary cost or overrun based right. on like red tape that you're having to drag get dragged through which delay yeah, execution of tasks for job crews right cement can only be put in in certain times of the year and, and whatnot so i you know without that full context of the letter yes like we're not we can't come out and say the town's completely 100 percent at fault maybe it was charged by some you know bad blood recently that have flavored I disagree, however, because of the scope of the individuals that are included in the letter. For that many, 
to agree that that language and that statement is what they've witnessed tells me that there's there's some systematic things that really have to change quickly or else the ship will keep sinking. And that's not what we want in Kingsville. I know everybody's very protectionist about this town. Everybody loves Kingsville. I do too. You guys do. You, you know, we all have our opinions about what can and can't happen. But progression and change is inevitable, right? That's, it's not, it's not going to stop. It stops. Then we, we, we wither and die, right? Like you got to do it. You got to do it smart. You got to do it appropriately. And if we're preventing even <laughs> our local, <laughs> like hardware stores and, and lawyers and, you know, development corporations and whatnot, and they don't want to work in the community that they're headquartered in, then all the surrounding communities that are cooperating and working with them will benefit and we won't. So, yeah. so what happens then? You know, what, what happens to, oh, you know what, we didn't, we didn't get any six story condos. Well, maybe we didn't get them, uh, but that also means that we lost one of the two grocery stores we have in town. Uh, maybe the entire downtown core withers and dies because we can't sustain small businesses anymore. And maybe we turn into a version of Wheatley or downtown Leamington. What's, what's, what's the right answer here? You know, we, there's too much dependency in certain aspects of listening to social media as being the pulse of the community. And it's such a misrepresentation of what's going on. And I, it, it saddens me that that has to happen and that has to go because it tells me that the municipality is either missing an opportunity ignorantly, not realizing that these issues are compounding amongst a bigger population of, of businesses and entrepreneurs, or we can't get out of our own way to solve the issues, i.e. retain talent and make sure that, you know, the small things that are going to keep our progressive community being progressive, you know, don't stop. And then goes, like I said, Leamington, Amherstburg, Essex, right? Look at all the development yeah. in Essex. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> look, at, look at all, <laughs> look at Essex. Look at the no, but, Essex. But I, and I will say this, that Kingsville losing administrative talent to other municipalities is nothing new. It's gone on for years. It has. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I once referred to Kingsville as Leamington's farm team. <laughs> you did. Yeah, because you did. of the number of, of, of staff members who left Kingsville to go and work in Leamington. Several of who live in Kingsville, but obviously, you know, Leamington was able to pay more. Yeah. And we're going back 10, 15 years. Well, and it's happening with Lakeshore now. Like, like there's a number of staff members that are leaving to go work in Lakeshore. Heading that way. Yeah. I, I didn't, Susan Hirota, isn't that where she ended up? It was Lakeshore? I'm, I could be wrong, but I, yeah, I'm not I sure know at least one. one or two administration reported heading that yeah. way, whether it be planning department or legal or whatnot. But yeah, that, that, that's, that's the outcome. And now we have this, this issue with the two school properties being, or the three school properties being deemed surplus here in the foreseeable future. Like, Municipality had the administration had the big meeting at the, the Grovedale. There's desire possibly to obtain those properties and develop them, right? Well, <laughs> are you going to like after reading this, are you going to sign on as a well, developer? Yeah. Who? Right. <laughs> <laughs> because, because the majority of, of large scale developers that I would think that would be capable of doing a project on those lands are listed on that letter. Well, right. I, I think it was Petrata who did the condo building at the end of Division, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. And I think Fortis is responsible for the school. Yeah. So Valenti did the the two that just went up behind the giant medical building. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's there's three. Yeah. You know, On the letter. I, there's a couple of names long standing. How many neighbor community? How, right? how many how many neighborhoods in this community are, are Branco homes? Right. Yeah. Like how many? Yeah. I mean, even to see like Robert Laba, and, Laba. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Truax, you know, mm -hmm. names who with long standing, you know, connections and who've done well, an outstanding tremendous amount in the community and and outstanding development proposals in front of the town. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like a number of those people have development proposals in front of the town right now, um, and and waiting for approvals. And I'm sure that that's why they're they've they've signed that letter. And and a number of them, they there are issues with some of those developments that no doubt the town is 
um, has informed them of or working through, but um, it doesn't stop the fact that, that, you know, asking for a, gr- uh, a group to be set up to, to meet with administration to come up with, with a review of processes isn't a bad thing. Because maybe the town comes back and says, you know what, we heard you and we think the way we're doing it is actually the best way for taxpayers. And, and they move on. Mm-hmm. Like that's the, the good thing about advice is that you don't have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you picked that one up early in life, did you? I did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just, it, you know, in light of a lot of the, the issues over the past few years with development, right? 200 main, 183, uh, the others that are west of the KDHS property. Uh, all the the stay of execution of development in the properties behind, right? The, the the joining of Spruce to what did that be? Applewood or Woodycrest or wherever behind the KDHS property, like all of that, you know, it it kind of showed that there's greater planning or greater initiative in order to kind of execute a master plan, right? Like we we want to do the right thing, and I think that a couple of issues have reared its head and it's making a lot of people gun shy to continue down that path, right? Look at all the controversy that have gone over some of those developments, right? How much legal obligation has the town gotten in unjustly because they've followed public opinion, right? Like how, how can a, how can anyone produce or propose a building development of a similar nature in the town of Kingsville not expect to have to go to the OLT? Yeah. Right. Like it, these are, it's the, it's the, the repetition of, of conduct, whether it be instigated by the municipality or council or you know, public opinion on social media. It's just, if, if those continual problems keep rearing their heads, I'll build it in Tecumseh. I'll build it in, in LaSalle. I don't care what the ground looks like. I'm going to buy ground to build my building anyway. Oh, and by the way, you know, I don't have to fight 38 naysayers at the OLT because they've convinced a council to do something that wasn't within their legal right. Well, and I guess that's another way of looking at it too is you've got council members who are weighed by, you know, either a vocal minority or, you know, enough naysayers that they are making decisions based on that instead of making them based on what is legal and what's allowed and when queried they're they're stand to their credit they're sticking to their guns and saying no i'd make the same decision again but look what happened the first time so you cost us this and you're willing to cost us again because yeah, yeah. You, it's what the people want. Well, what the people want doesn't always fall in with what's legal and what's allowed. Yeah, right. So, you know, you, you could look at it and say, you know, in one sense, maybe council is handcuffed administration. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And also because of the fact that it's been a bit of a um, transitional place for people to stay. They've not received consistent direction in in supporting uh, departments, right? Maybe... Uh, at one point in time when there was somebody in legal, they had an opinion that things could be executed in a certain way. And then, you know, that got implanted in everybody's, I, listen, everybody's got to, as a lawyer, you can spin any situation. Sure, whatever. sure. But I guess if I look at it municipally, <clears throat> the rules are the rules. Like it's, it's, it's simply stated, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. It, you know, it's. It's See, not but like I you're, live you're the, going to a court of law and trying yeah. this. You uh, no, but I live in the gray, right? Like that's where my whole career is. Is where where can I benefit from what you haven't said in that 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 legislation? What haven't you interpreted the same way that I interpret it? But the layman can look at it both ways and go, well, you're not wrong and you're not wrong. So what, right? Okay. And then and that's that's what I'm saying. So maybe yeah. maybe because of those situations, maybe it it just. You know, it's that beast that kind of just fosters and grows. And then unfortunately, there isn't any direction that can right the ship fast enough. And maybe, you know, that snowball kind of is rolling down the hill. How many more analogies am I going to use in this sense? Let's throw in another one. <laughs> I don't, I would hope, and, and, you know, to summarize, I would hope that this letter was received. I would assume that council had a closed session 
to discuss this because it wasn't necessarily public record, right? It wasn't, and, and, and I apologize, I wasn't exactly diligent reading the minutes for the last few council meetings because of summertime. But I would hope that they are considering this request because it, these are the individuals, these are the companies, these are the, the entrepreneurs that foster the, the thriving ability for development in our community. This is not, you know, some Torontonian development company going, well, we want to buy up all the farmland and we want to put up a stadium, right? Like, it's not what it is. So I would be hope. nice to have a stadium. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> no, everybody's going to say, we need a pool. Oh, God. Why do you <laughs> oh, have to say the God. word? <laughs> <laughs> so I would, hope, I would hope that council is considering this and, and something happens, right? And maybe they have. And, we, and maybe they have. But again, unfortunately, because we weren't able to obtain that, this is just our unbiased or biased, whatever you want to call it. It's our show. We, we do whatever. I swore today. I have, we can do whatever I want. We're not have, the news. I have no bias. We aren't the news. Oh my gosh, we aren't the news. No, we, we're not. No, I know, but you know how many people over the summertime have referred to us as Zick? Hey, the reason you guys are the reason why I know stuff about We are Kingsville. not the I'm news. Like, I'm not the news. We are not the news. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm drinking. Did the news. This isn't it. This is not the news. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> CTV pulls up and like, uh, sir, <laughs> well, we need we need you to fill in <laughs> for, for the national lead. Like, what? No. no, Dave's there with his shark shirt. Oh my his, god, uh, three hundred shark shirt. Oh, hey, his hey. mud hens hat. Is that the mud hens? Yeah, it's the Toledo mud hens. Yeah, yeah. No, well, hey, hey, we are back again. Anything else, gentlemen? While we wrap up here, uh, speak now forever. Hold your peace. All right, thanks for tuning in. Go oh, there's us. another block party coming up. Oh, there, yes, yes. The last the, block Twenty first, twenty first. Yeah, yep. yeah. They decided they were going to have one a month. Uh, I went to the one in Cottom. I went to the first one in Kingsville. Missed the second one in Kingsville. Country night, but uh, yeah, twenty first of September. Hopefully, it's not raining and or cold. Go, I, I'll probably go. Go to it. Wait, I think I think so. Go to it. I'm going to have that weekend. Probably <laughs> might be there. I'll be there later on. How was the turnout last one? When I got there, it was it was okay. I got there late though. Like yeah. uh, my daughter was working, so I didn't get yeah. there probably till about quarter to ten. Ah, it's um, the end of the night. So we did like a we did a loop of downtown. <coughs> it was really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, Turnout was great at the first one. Yes, did mm-hmm. we have first one in Kings? Did we have a show since? <clears throat> yeah, we did. We had one. Did we talk about it? We yeah, did probably. Yeah. Well, yeah. What else we talk about? Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> what else we talk? We don't talk about thinking. <laughs> All right, like and subscribe. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to That Kingsville Podcast. Uh, we are not the news. No. No, totally not, the, not news. the news. Thanks to Gary Glass for, some, for producing the podcast, as always. And uh, we'll see you next time.